As far as I'm aware, fusing of borosilicate glass has never been much of an issue in the art community. Now that some good people are trying to organize a system for recycling boro, crushed borosilicate may become much more available and much less expensive. This video discusses a few things I've learned from testing. I hope to fill out the inf information gap with more videos as we all learn. For people who have tried fusing boro, it's a notoriously devitrifying glass. Whether this is due to crystal growth or the loss of volatiles is a matter of conjecture and not a topic of this video. This video is strictly practical. If you get a sample of crushed glass that includes fines, I think it's generally wise to remove the finest glass for two reasons. First, the fines make the final product opaque. But more importantly, the fines from any crushing process contain most of the dirt. I use a fine kitchen screen like this one that has about 30 openings per inch available at any kitchen store. I also take out the pieces larger than a quarter inch using a screen made from fencing screen I picked up at Home Depot. It's basic infusing that the material fused in the mold needs to have a higher coefficient of thermal expansion than the mold itself. Glass people know that window glass has that window glass has a coefficient of expansion of about 90 times 10 to the minus seventh meter per meter per degree centigrade. Boro has a COE of about 30. Alumina has a COE of about 50. As you fuse, the glass softens and takes on the shape of the mold. Then as you cool, the glass and the mold both contract as most things do when they cool. If you fuse window glass, the glass shrinks more than the mold, so the piece drops right out of an aluminum mold. Fusing boro in the same mold, the mold shrinks more than the glass, and the mold grabs the glass, either breaking the mold or making the, piece, the glass piece impossible to get out. Here's a little trick. Glossy papers like Sunday ads and magazines contain as much as 30% kaolin clay and calcium carbonate, which are both good mold releases. Cut and fold two layers of glossy paper and fit them into the mold on top of the release. During firing, the paper burns off, leaving the kaolin and calcium carbonate in a little space, which helps greatly with the removal of the boro piece. Making your molds with a 5% draft also helps. I have found that boric acid works as a flux on borosilicate, but at much higher temperatures than are required for soda lime glass. I flux these two tiles at 1832 degrees Fahrenheit. I fused these two tiles at 1832 Fahrenheit. One I added nothing to. The other I first put a layer of 120 grams of unflux glass on the bottom, then added 1.2 grams or 1% boric acid to 100 gra 120 grams of glass along with 0.6 grams of 10% bentonite clay for the top layer. The bentonite attaches the boric acid to the glass so it doesn't fall through to the bottom of the mold. I fired both of these on the following schedule. As quickly as possible to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, hold 10 minutes to burn out the paper, then 20 minutes to 1832 Fahrenheit, then hold for 10 minutes. On a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see how much more gloss was retained by the flux tile. I plan to do another video on kiln issues, but note that in heating boro, time is your enemy. I have a very fast kiln that will go from 1000 to 1832 in 10 minutes. Time your kiln at full, at full blast to see what it can do. All the time spent between 1000 and 1832 devits the glass and burns off the flux.